G'day YouTube, 1MJ here. So I found a couple of interesting stories uh, on the net today. Uh, and this one, which is, uh, it was some pretty big news about PayPal a little while ago that they were gonna start offering uh, cryptocurrencies. So this story says that uh, PayPal is reportedly uh, going to offer crypto trading through a Paxos partnership. So the real popular Paxos coin is the Paxos gold one. Uh, that's pretty popular at the moment. But they also have a stable coin and it sounds like PayPal may, may be going down that road of using a Paxos stable coin. Now the story goes on further to say that nothing's been confirmed yet. Uh, PayPal hasn't confirmed this and neither of Paxo. But it is interesting. There's been a lot of talk about PayPal getting into cryptocurrencies. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see what cryptocurrencies they offer. People were talking about Bitcoin before they were going to offer Bitcoin. And look, they may well offer Bitcoin. Who knows? It's hard to say. But my sort of, my guess uh, would be they'll probably come up with their own cryptocurrency in all fairness. But even if that's the case, PayPal is a massive behemoth in the financial uh, and industry sort of world. Uh, the fact that they get involved with any chronic cryptocurrency full stop obviously tells you where we're headed and there's a number of other big agencies that are going to get involved uh, there's talk about swift getting involved with cryptocurrencies you know possibly ripple you know all the uh, big central banks you know allegedly uh, you know looking at making their own uh, central bank uh, digital currencies and things like that so for those who are looking into cryptocurrencies right now i think you are a mile ahead of the game of the general public. The general public have probably still got no idea and just think cryptocurrencies are all just this fad and again, you know, they're not real money and all the rest of it. And, you know, it was funny, my daughter tried to tell me the other day, Bitcoin's not real and you can't do anything with it. And I said, sweetheart, it's not real in the sense that you can hold it, but most of the money we have these days isn't either. There's very little actual cash around these days. Most of it is all digital. So there's no real difference. And she was saying, but you can't spend it and you know, you can't cash it in. And anyway, it was too hard, it was too hard to try and tell her. She's obviously uh, still a child. She's only 11 years old. Uh, but I did think it was pretty funny that, you know, even kids at her age are still kind of being, you know, fed that narrative that it's not real, it's fake money and fake this and fake that. And yeah, if you look into it, I guess in some ways you could say all money's kind of fake because it's all, you know, kind of, you know, these days at least, anyway, once upon a time money was backed by gold, but now it's backed by, you know, who knows what and it gets, you know, printed to oblivion and all the rest of it. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> I got a bit off track there. Getting back to it, the fact that PayPal are going to get back, uh, not going to get back, but are getting into cryptocurrencies, this is massive. And again, keep an eye out for SWIFT and all the other sort of uh, traditional systems that we've used for moving money around the world they're all getting into cryptocurrencies. It is the way of the future. People who are getting in now, they are getting in early. If you've got into a good project or a number of good projects, you're gonna be laughing in years time, uh, in my opinion. Not financial advice though. Another interesting story is a uh, Huobi, uh, Japan, uh, Japanese uh, exchange. They're looking at adding six new tokens and some of these tokens I've found pretty interesting. Engine. Uh, I'm a big fan of Engine. Gaming is huge. I, I, I do a little bit of gaming, not a lot. I'm not massively into the online stuff, but I know the younger generation, they love this stuff. Uh, and non-fungible tokens and things like that, i.e., which is what Engine is into, I think they're going to be massive. So I've got uh, myself a small bag of Engine. Uh, IOST, so that's uh, interesting. They, you know, haven't performed too well, although a lot of cryptocurrencies haven't for quite some time. Uh, they, there's been a little bit of news about them. NEO, I got myself some NEO, um, and you know, it's been up and down, but you know, I'm up in my NEO, so I'm all right, but really, NEO needs to start building stuff uh, on, their, on their platform, really. Uh, Ontology, Quantum, Tezos. Uh, you know, Tezos is basically going on all the sort of exchanges, but what I've noticed is there's not a whole lot being built on Tezos at the moment. Really, the only information that I sort of see, and I'm not saying there's nothing, but it's not a lot. It's mainly just staking with Tezos. That's it. Everyone grabs Tezos and stakes it. So I'm not saying Tezos, that's all it's doing, but I haven't really seen a whole lot other than just yeah, staking on Tezos. So they're in the same boat as a lot of these other tokens. They need to start delivering real product, uh, you know, 
things that people can actually use other than just staking a coin because simply staking a coin doesn't give it any real world use. But interesting about these tokens uh, and we'll see if they get a little bit of a pump due to that news and it'll be interesting to see uh, which one or you know maybe all of them if they make it onto Huobi because they're slowly but surely building. Huobi is one of the bigger exchanges out there now. So well done. But now we're going to move on to some of the uh, other... There's a lot of... Uh, positivity in the market at the moment uh, and that's a good thing and a bad thing but from my experience what I've seen is when uh, the market's getting fairly uh, exuberant and positive usually the opposite can happen uh, and so my again guess is that I feel there's going to be a correction coming sometime soon uh, exactly where we'll go to hard to say but we'll move on to that soon but we can just go here so Bitcoin analyst expects massive price movement in the next few days. Now this is already two days old, uh, so nothing has really happened uh, in the last two days, but we'll have to wait and see. And this did say within the last 24 hours, the Bitcoin price moved between 9,000 and 9,200 and could not break it. I think it's still trading around about 9,100, some, something like that. So this person is expecting uh, a massive price movement doesn't say up or down, just as says a massive price movement. So we'll have to wait and see. And again, Grayscale's interest in Bitcoin remains strong. They're still buying tons and tons of Bitcoin. Uh, so yeah, and Ethereum, they're buying Ethereum, uh, but they've uh, decreased the amount of Ethereum and XRP and Litecoin that they've been buying. But they are still buying, but predominantly Bitcoin. So we come over here. Another top analyst says that Bitcoin, Ethereum and X, uh, XRP are poised to break out and end lengthy consolidation. So a lot of positivity here. Now we do have some negativity though, which uh, goes to uh, show that not everyone's positive, but a majority of people are positive at the moment and believe that uh, there's upside coming. So this Bitcoin whale says that, you know, there's a lot of dumb money going into DeFi and that he believes they're basically massive Ponzi schemes. And look, he could be right, but he is a Bitcoin maximalist, uh, the person who wrote this. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Massive Bitcoin fan. I love Bitcoin. I'm invested in Bitcoin, but I'm not tied to any one coin. I don't want to just blindly believe in one thing. You know, you've got to do your research and you've got to see that altcoins, they do have a purpose. Does that mean all of them are going to last and be around? Nah, not a chance. There's too many coins out there. I think, you know, there'll be, I don't know, you might have 20 or 30 of them that are legit and, you know, have real world use and they'll be around. Uh, and the rest, yeah. For the people who are new, you'll see coins will come and go and people will do exit scams. And I particularly believe a lot of the new DeFi projects that are going to come out, they will be scams. People are just going to jump on the DeFi thing. That's massive at the moment. If you can't go to a decent page where people have identified themselves as, you know, who's the owner and they're not active in the community with a GitHub page and a Twitter account and, you know, all the normal things, Telegram and all the rest of it, be very skeptical and you know strongly consider staying away from those coins. But everyone wants to jump on the DeFi bubble at the moment. And look, I'm in on the DeFi bubble. I'm not going to pretend like I'm not. But just be careful because a lot of these coins, you know, they're pumping three, four, five x on the day that they're getting released, and they're kind of just being pumped and dumped uh, at the same time. Now that's not to say any of the new ones aren't any good, you know, do your own research, but I'm kind of, you know, I've invested in the ones that I like and they're ones that have been around for a little while. They're not, you know, brand new, but, you know, that goes to show that uh, they don't have a track record, the brand new ones, so just be mindful of that. But that doesn't mean they can't go on to be really good projects. Everyone has to start somewhere. somewhere. So a bit of negativity here, but then we go over here and it's more positivity. So Bitcoin breakout on July 22nd. So basically two days from now, they're expecting it to break out. Now, whether it breaks out upwards or downwards, I don't know. But it's definitely been coiling and it's not just Bitcoin, it's uh, a few cryptocurrencies have been, you know, sort of trading sideways. So Ethereum's been doing it, uh, XRP's been doing it. A lot of the other small altcoins, they've yeah been seeing massive gains. But I guess the big three at the moment have been trading sort of sideways. Even Litecoin's been trading, 
trading sideways uh, for a while. So, you know, some of the older older dogs, as they would say, have been trading sideways and we're gonna have to wait and see where the breakout goes. Now look, my long-term uh, perspective is it's gonna go up. But my short-term perspective is I just think there might be a little bit too many people who are positive at the moment uh, and they're probably all gonna start longing uh, and then it'll go short to yeah kill that market but you know we could we could be wrong we'll see but another one over here ethereum bears will get scorched if this pivotal resistance breaks so it basically just goes down here to show that uh, ethereum again for a while has been trading sideways you know it's jumped up above and it's dropped down below but there's just this kind of coiling happening and we can see over here that it's on the verge of breaking out of this trend line so we'll have to wait and see uh, you know a lot of big things are supposed to be happening for Ethereum and I've invested heavily into Ethereum. It's my second biggest holding. Bitcoin's my biggest, uh, Ethereum's my second biggest and then XRP's my third biggest. And then I've got a number of uh, altcoins that I've put in, you know, sort of 1%, 1.5% of my portfolio into those. So that's all the positivity going on, but then we can come over here and we can have a look at Bitcoin. So we've put it on a logarithmic chart, a logarithmic chart, sorry, this time to have a look at it. Now, Bitcoin since 2017, its average price range has been between about $6,000 and $8,000. This is where it's traded the most. Definitely got up above there for a while, and then we traded in there a number of times, and we had a six month sort of period so in November 2018 to about May 2019, we were below the 6,000, but then we got up above and then we dropped down into it, stayed up above, dropped down right into it and we're traveling in there, up above. Then we had that big correction that came with the pandemic and then we've been slowly trading up and then we've got to this point where we're trading in this top channel now. And as I said, slowly but surely sort of working our way down you know we got some highs and dropped down got some highs and then we've been coming down and traveling sideways a little bit we've lost the 50-day moving average we're below that we are getting very close to the 100-day moving average and again i'll be waiting to see whether the 100-day moving average uh, becomes the line of support but my sneaky suspicion is we'll probably keep traveling down and at some stage, I think we're gonna bounce off the 200 day moving average. And it's sitting around that $8,000 mark. So uh, whether this kind of travels sideways for you know another month or two to meet it, we'll have to wait and see. But I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, with all the you know positive in the positivity and exuberance that's happening, that we don't have a bit of a dump, come down to around about the $8,000 level. So at the moment, where's the 200 day moving average? 8,500. So I can definitely see us having a, a dump, well not a dump, because that's probably a horrible way to put it, but a, a sell-off, yep, definitely, a correction back to around 8,500, and we might stay around this 8,500 for a little while, and then we will really start, you know, that bull market that everyone's talking about. I mean, we could say that, but we've been in a bull market since uh, straight after the pandemic, but also, it would be fair to say that we've been in a bull market since back in uh, the 15th of December 2018. I think that's 19, sorry. Yeah, that was a little bit wrong. No, that's correct. 17th of December 2018. So that was after the correction of 2017. We got down to here and then we've slowly started to work our way back up. So anyway, that's my thoughts. So again, I wouldn't be surprised and I'm looking us looking for us to find support. It could be off the 100, but I think we're gonna break through the 100 and we're gonna test that 200 day moving average. But also what we can do, is let's have a look at the weekly. Let's see how it's going on the weekly. So much the same, but here, maybe we're using the 50 uh, week moving average as a bit of support. So the 50 day moving average, not we're below it, but the 50 week we're above. And what I like to do is zoom out a little bit. When you zoom out, it gives you a lot more perspective. You know, on the daily, things can you know jump up very fast and jump down very fast in a day, and especially when we're going down into the hourlies and the 15 minutes and things like that. The volatility is massive. In the weeklies, the volatility is not so much. 
again, it's still there. It's not that we don't have any volatility. Of course we do. But it's not as much. Now, that's the weekly. Let's have a look at the monthly. So, on the monthly, we haven't even hit the 50-day uh, month. And there is no 200-day month. Oh, sorry, 200 monthly moving average. But it's still that same kind of pattern. We've really been ranging in this kind of $6,000 to $8,000 level. And we are really kind of using that $8,000 level as a bit of support. It's been resistance at times, but it was support sort of here. We stayed above it. Then we fell below briefly, jumped back up. It's using 8,000 as uh, support. It's a bit of resistance and support here. And now it's become support. So particularly when we're looking at the monthly, geez, we might only have really another sort of month or two. And then there's going to be that point where we're either going to have to break out of this trend line or fall back down below. Now, my personal belief is we're going to break out above at some stage. I just can't tell you exactly when. But that gives you a bit of perspective is that, it, you know, it's definitely coiling on the long term. You can see that coil and at some stage we're going to have to jump, fall down here, which I don't think we're going to do, or coil in here for a little bit more and then slowly start to break out. Anyway, we'll go over here, have a quick look. Market cap. It's really been stuck around that kind of 280 billion, 260, 50 billion dollar mark for a while. It's been ranging as well. Now, all the prices that we can see, these are, you know, low compared to that 2017 uh, hype. You know, we were up at 800 billion. You know, we're getting so, oh so close to a trillion dollar mark. So, getting into projects at the moment. Look, they might be somewhat pumped up and there absolutely could be a correction at some stage, but it's still so early in the piece. Oh, so early. Yeah. Find your projects. Do your research. If you believe in them long term, get in. If you're just looking for a quick pump and dump, just be very careful. You know, the whole trading thing, it's, you know, fraught with danger. It's not that you can't make money trading, but most traders lose money that's just the way it is it's the investors that do the best but look if you're a trader and you're good at it knock your socks off me i generally uh, invest long term or i invest in the trends if you find a trend get in you know ride it for a couple of months and then get out uh, that's not a bad way swing trading and things like that but the investment side uh, that's more what i'm into i'm invested for the long term in most of my coins minimum of sort of months to maybe a couple of years now, not all of my coins, you know, I got into Doge a while ago and I, you know, doubled my money there. I'm out at Doge now and Doge is back in, going back up again, but I don't mind because I doubled my money and I put it into other things. You know, I put some money uh, into other things that I don't plan on staying in the full long term, but definitely, you know, for a couple of weeks, couple of months, I'm hoping that I've traded well and that, you know, again, in a couple of weeks, a couple of months time, I'll have hopefully doubled my money. Uh, and I'll just keep looking for those small trades and things like that. So Verge was something I got into. I probably didn't time that well. I'm down about 15% on Verge, but I'm hoping that over the next sort of, you know, couple of months at least, I've got into Verge at a reasonably good price uh, and it'll have a pump and I'll be able to cash it out. Now, I probably won't cash all of it out. I don't mind Verge, Verge I should say. Uh, it's been around for a while. It's got a community and things like that. So I'll probably, you know, once I sort of double my profits, triple my profits, uh, I'll sell half of it and then I'll let the other half ride. But they're the kind of things that I like to do. Anyway, a bit of a long video. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed what I've put out there. If you've liked my content, please hit that like button. It really helps uh, with the algorithm so other people can see my videos. Leave a comment. Tell me what you're invested in, uh, your theories and your plans and things like that. Uh, I don't... Pl I don't uh, pretend like I know it all. I'm still trying to learn and get more information. So I'd love any tips that you might have there for me. Uh, yeah, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you made a couple of gains today, a couple of gains today, I should say. And I'll see you next time.